In recent months, we've seen around 200 statues of figures from American history toppled in various cities across the country. It began with tearing down or vandalizing statues of Robert E. Lee and Confederates, but now it has included statues of George Washington and other great American leaders. If you want to remake America, you've got to tear down belief in and the, the, the country we have now, you have to make the country we have now and the founding fathers and our institutions illegitimate. Well, I think it was Karl Marx who said that if you can take people's history away from them, you can manipulate them. A lot of people act like they're ashamed of America, ashamed of, of its past. Imperfect? Of course it is. People were involved and therefore it's imperfect because people are imperfect. Every aspect of America is being redefined in a negative way. And so because of this, uh, the progressives and people like that are trying to say, well, since everything in our past was bad, we have to junk all that, get rid of you know, the Constitution, get rid of American history, and move forward into this new utopia that they're planning with you know, socialism and equality and so forth. Students at Wisconsin want to take down the statue of Abraham Lincoln because they say he owned slaves. Well, Abraham Lincoln did not own slaves. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous, but it shows that there's this ignorance of our history that's creeping in now. They've so redefined the past as negative that they're going out of their way to find negative things that didn't even exist. To explore the battle over American history even further, we spoke with Bob Woodson, founder of the Woodson Center in Washington, D.C., a veteran of the civil rights movement who feels the movement has been hijacked recently. Recently, the city of San Francisco has voted to change the names of 44 public schools, including the names of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Abraham Lincoln. Would you say there's a war on history in, in our time? Yeah, I really think we're in a cultural war right now. And those of us who believe in traditional values, we are, we are counterculture. <laughs> When you have uh, school systems uh, around the country who have adapted the anti-political history of America's uh, 1619 project, uh, in the New York Times, there were 20 black journalists who came together to author what they call the 1619 project. And they identified uh, America's founding is in 1619 and not 1776. And that was the year that black 20 black slaves came on the shores. And they said, because of America's history with slavery, that everything that developed from that capitalism was therefore invalid. Uh, and, and, and so they have uh, unfortunately had the, uh, the support of major corporations and they have taken this um, anti-American doctrine around to public school systems in all parts of the country. And so this is just one expression of this denigration of, uh, of American values. Abraham Lincoln never owned slaves. He did everything to free them. Frederick Douglass was a slave. Yeah. So the question was, so it isn't the, it isn't the slave ownership that is really at the basis of their opposition to these figures. They're using that as a proxy for what they really believe, because why are they taking down the statue of Frederick Douglass? They're, they're really attacking anybody that has, as the foundation of their life, Judeo-Christian values. Hmm. It's really a war against faith. I have a dream. I would not be surprised if they went after Dr. King because of his Christian faith. You gotta understand, this has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with using race as, as, a, as a bludgeon to try to destroy civic institutions in America. It has nothing to do with race. They're using race and they've hijacked the civil rights movement in their quest to undermine this country's founding values. I understand one of the aspects of the 1619 Project is the idea that racism in is, is in America's DNA. It really is. It, it says that America is in its, uh, that slavery is, is a part of, is in America's DNA. Racism, systemic racism is in our DNA. 
and therefore uh, the, because the founders, half of them are slave owners, therefore the Declaration of Independence therefore is invalid. And, and so they are trying to define America by its birth defect of slavery and Jim Crow. And we, our counter is no individual or nation should be judged by the worst of what they used to be. Bob Woodson is working with many conservative allies, including Dr. Carol Swain, retired law professor from Vanderbilt, to counteract the lies of the 1619 Project. It's very problematic because a lot of our young people are being taught that America is an evil country. It's an oppressive country, and that is not true American history. What is remarkable is that America had an Emancipation Proclamation and if you look at the history of America, there have been plenty of mistakes made, but throughout it all, there were people trying to correct those mistakes. Yeah, there are all kinds of historical inaccuracies. We uh, at the Woodson Center uh, organized uh, 23 plus scholars and activists to confront this uh, 1619. We call ourselves the 1776 Unites America is a country of redemption. America is a country of, of second chances. And so if we, uh, in 1776, we believe that uh, America is defined by its promise. And the, and the Constitution uh, is a mechanism for us to be self-correcting. And America is the only nation on the face of the earth that fought a civil war to end slavery. What's the ultimate goal of the 1619 Project? It's a Marxist uh, goal, and that is to decimate this nation, to undermine it. And they are using, hijack the civil rights movement to do that. Why does the battle over history matter at all? It's because we, if you don't know where you've been, it's very difficult to determine where you're going. <laughs> So it is important to know where these foundational principles come from. It's most important to know. This battle is critical to our future. I don't think that we have, we have been this close to just anarchy. That you see that police, this assault on police is resulting in withdrawal from some of the most high crime areas as a result. Murder is, is soaring in some of these cities and is directly related to the nullification of policing. You have to understand they do not believe that America can be fixed. It can only be destroyed. And on the rubble of our Judeo-Christian past, a new America can emerge that is free from racism, that is free from classism and sexism, and that is equal for everybody and we all live happily ever after. I've exaggerated it a little bit, but not much. So the question is, what do you do with the freedoms of the Constitution? What do you do with our Christian history? And the answer is, it has to be destroyed. I believe in America, we are losing our freedom because we as Christians are afraid to speak up. And that's a dangerous. There is no reason for us to be afraid. America and, and American people brought Christ and freedom to people all over the world. It's time for us Americans to bring Christ and freedom back to America because there is no freedom, no, even in America without Christ. Real freedom is freedom in Christ. And we have to make sure that we stand up